This video is sponsored by Squarespace. What's going on guys, Vincent here from the creativedojo.net. Hope you guys are doing well out there. Today we're actually not doing a tutorial on After Effects. Today we're talking about performance in After Effects, hardware, and really how to build a proper After Effects computer in 2020. There's been a lot of recent new hardware drops recently from AMD and NVIDIA, specifically the new AMD Zen 3 CPUs, AKA the 5000 series Verizon, as well as their new Big Navi RDNA 2 GPUs. And also, of course, everyone's talking about NVIDIA's new RTX 3000 series GPUs there. So a lot of stuff going on here and how to really piece it all together and really how do you build a proper machine for After Effects in 2020. So huge disclaimer, I'm not a tech reviewer. I'm not a huge hardware gearhead. I don't sit around doing benchmark tests all day, um, but I do keep up with the hardware relatively well. And I think that I have a general idea of what's going on. And if you're in the market to build a new machine for After Effects, I think it can guide you in the right direction if you're kind of unsure on what to do and how to really optimize your gear here. So before we talk about hardware, I think it's really important to talk about the history of After Effects and how historically After Effects has handled performance in general. So Chris from Pro Video Coalition did a really, really good thorough article series on After Effects and its performance. It's a 15 part series where he talks about the history of After Effects, how they've handled performance. He's even interviewed a lot of third-party opinions, plugin developers, a lot of visual effects artists, motion graphics artists, and a lot of other people here to really get a really good summary. So if you're really interested for a really thorough explanation on the history and performance of After Effects, this is a pretty good place to start right here to kind of catch up on your history. So to basically give you guys a rough summary, After Effects was first released in 1993, and 12 years later, Intel released their first multi-core CPU. So you can see that when After Effects was first designed in the core structure of After Effects, I mean, it was designed 12 years before the first release of the multi-core Intel CPU. So you can tell that a lot of the stuff that was originally part of After Effects was really designed for a single core use. So previous to After Effects CC 2015, there was an option called render multiple frames simultaneously. And these versions of After Effects pretty much tried to utilize multi-core CPUs effectively. It wasn't the best implementation, but it did definitely use the multi-cores on your system. But fast forward today in the current version, After Effects does not really utilize multi-core CPUs pretty much at all. Of course, there's been a huge shift to the GPU, so a lot of plugins, including the native After Effects ones, have been slowly been converted to GPU. A lot of third-party plugins are also um, GPU accelerated, so it works a lot faster and does a lot of computing on the GPU. It's important to note that not everything calculated on the GPU is a lot faster. Some calculations are cheaper to do on the CPU, and it can be kind of expensive to transfer data to the GPU and back. So yes, After Effects does utilize the GPU for a lot of effects and plugins, but it's not super dependent on the GPU at the moment. One of the major core flaws in After Effects and how it handles performance is that it was originally designed to composite bitmap images together and really manipulate pixels and push things around. Whereas a lot of the work that we do now is really 3D animation based and it's really geometry based, not so much bitmap based. And a lot of the major technical advancements and developments for the past 10 years have revolved around 3D geometry. Think like render engines, game engines, GPU advancements. Everyone's really focused on the geometry aspect and that's really not how After Effects is really designed. So with that really rough, basic, summarized version of After Effects, you can kind of tell that After Effects isn't the most optimized piece of software. And that's not really After Effects' fault. It's been around for a long time. The core part of After Effects has been around for a long time. So with that in mind, let's talk about hardware. So one of the best places to find more information about hardware and how it relates to certain softwares like Adobe After Effects, Cinema 4D, Octane, Redshift, is Puget Systems. They do professional custom builds, but they also do a lot for the community in terms of hardware testing and testing really thoroughly hardware for certain software like After Effects and stuff like that. And they do a lot of benchmark testing as well. And basically what they found based on their benchmarks is that usually After Effects really utilizes a single core for the most part, and you really want that core to be extremely fast. So rather than getting like a 10 or 12 core CPU with a pretty slow base clock on each individual core, it may be advantageous to get something with less cores, but a faster base clock. So more cores does not equal more performance in terms of After Effects performance for the most part. And this is something that I've experienced as well, personally. Now there are some exceptions like the Threadrippers, but for the most part, what everyone kind of recommends, including Puget Systems, is really the sweet spot right here, which is the Intel Core i9, 10900K, 10 core, pretty fast base clock, pretty close to the 10700K, the 9900K, which is last gen, and of course the AMD Ryzen 7 3800X, 
8 core. Of course, this is not updated for the new Ryzen 5000 series AMD CPUs, but that was released a couple of weeks ago. But these are the kind of tiers of CPUs that you're aiming for. So effectively, you don't really want to look at the number of cores per se. You want to look at the base core speed, the fastest single core that you can get. I mean, of course, if you have more cores, it's always better for other tasks outside from After Effects. But for the most part, really try to balance the speed versus the core count. Scrolling down to the GPU, the GPU is even less important than After Effects. Now, the GPU is very, very important if you're doing Cinema 4D work with Octane, Redshift, any of those things, or if you're using some pretty heavy GPU related effects um, like Element 3D and whatnot. But typically, you don't necessarily need a killer card like um, a RTX Titan or a 3090 unless you're doing more professional type of work where you're working for like Hollywood blockbuster movies, studios, and you're using 3D renderers and using stuff like Cinema 4D and whatnot where you actually can utilize that GPU and memory. But for After Effects, the GPU isn't so much important. So it really seems like the sweet spot is around the RTX 3080 card, somewhere around that range. It's pretty reasonable. A lot of people will have these cards already from just playing games or whatever you guys do. It's pretty budget friendly for the most part compared to the more professional cards like the Titans and stuff. So if you have the cash, the 3080 is a pretty sweet spot right there. We'll talk more about specific models and cards later in this video. But again, the GPU is not so important in After Effects. Now, RAM, as you guys know, is extremely important in After Effects. It controls RAM previewing, it controls a lot of things, and instead of writing things to the cache, you can just play it off RAM. And so they recommend getting as much RAM as possible, um, starting with 32 and hopefully going up a little bit more than 32, so 64, um, pretty much as high as you can go and in the fastest memory you can, that you can afford. Um, and this is really gonna help speed your, your kind of workflow in After Effects. And so definitely load up on RAM if you can. Now for storage, they actually recommend a two-stage approach. One, SSD or NVMe drive for your OS and your install of After Effects, and a second hard drive for caches and whatnot. Now they did say that NVMe drives can be a lot faster than SSD, which we already knew, um, but you're typically not really gonna see this as a bottleneck for your, for your workflow in After Effects. Um, so you can probably just get by with a normal SSD, or if you have the cache, go for the NVMe drive. So talking about the 10th gen Intel Core processors, if you're a team blue and you're not a fan of AMD, I would recommend the Intel Core i9 10900K processor. This seems to be kind of the sweet spot. This is the K unlocked version, so you could technically overclock it if you're you know, more on the risk inclined side. Um, but this is a pretty sweet spot, or if it's a little bit too expensive, you can also go for the last gen, the 9900K, which is a pretty nice card as well. Or you can take a one step down and go with the i7-10700K, I believe, which is also a pretty good performing card here, which I think a lot of people will benefit from. So you're typically looking at uh, CPUs generally in that price range to get pretty decent performance in After Effects. Again, you wanna get high core clock speeds. Switching over to the AMD Ryzen 5000 series CPUs, if you're team red, um, there's a lot more options here. AMD has always been a little bit more about the value per dollar, and this is the case for a lot of their CPUs. Um, if you have the dough, I would recommend the 5950X. The max boost clock is only 4.9 gigahertz, but again, you're training that with the number of core counts. So if you're doing other things where cores are actually important, this may be a better processor for you if you're not strictly in After Effects. I think the sweet spot really here is either the 5900X as well as the 5800X, which I think a lot of people would benefit from right here. So these two processors, the 5900X and the 5800X, it's really the sweet spot that you want to aim for. And again, if money is an issue, you can always go for the previous generation with the 3800 XT and the other cards similar in that price range. Let's talk GPUs, specifically the NVIDIA's RTX 30 series GPUs. If you can get your hands on them, these released two weeks ago and everyone's been trying to buy them up and um, so it's pretty impossible to get at the moment. But if you're able to get them, you're looking at the high-end 3090. These are the guys that really need a lot of memory and a lot of CUDA cores. And so this is pretty much the top end echelon as of the moment. So if you're using a lot of Redshift stuff, if you're using a lot of Octane stuff, 3D renderers, um, game development and stuff like that, then the 3090 is for you. I think for a lot of my core audience, as well as a lot of hobbyists and amateurs, people who are starting to get into the game but are not quite in the game fully yet, I think that the 3070 is a really, really good card, a really budget-friendly card 
to really get you decent performance in After Effects, gaming, um, Octane, Redshift, and still keep the price a little low. It only has eight gigabytes of memory, um, but I think for the most part, if you're strictly in After Effects, this shouldn't really be a huge issue for you. And I think the 37 is a great budget-friendly amateur hobbyist card. For most people who are actually in the game, I think that the 3080 is a really good middle ground card for you guys with 10 gigabytes of memory. Overall, awesome performance, and it isn't too far behind the RTX 3090 in terms of overall performance, especially for After Effects, unless you need the huge increase in memory. Switching to Team Red over here, we're talking about the AMD Radeon 6000 series that was just released today. We're talking about their 6900 XT. This is going to be the RTX 3090 competitor right here. Pretty decent value for the price. I believe you're still slacking on the memory compared to the 3090, but this is their kind of competitor if you prefer Team Red. Again, the sweet spot's really gonna be the 6800 and the 6800 XT. These are the 3070 and the 3080 competitors, so choose accordingly. Typically, I lean more towards NVIDIA Team Green just because their driver supports are a little bit better, um, and also a lot of renders support NVIDIA a little bit better than AMD at the moment. Of course, this could change with the fact that Apple has kind of dropped nvidia and so if you're trying to use like a card for like an eGPU, i think um, at this moment in time amd cards are a lot more stable in mac os if you're into the eGPU for Macs and whatnot it's important to know that for after effects you know you really don't get any benefits from multiple gpus um, sli is pretty much dead um, so you don't need like multiple gpus to really run after effects well and if you're doing things where you're using renderers like octane redshift where it scales with multiple gpus and yes you would benefit from that but strictly after effects you're not going to benefit from multiple gpus again ram is really really important try to aim for around the 32 to 64 gigabytes range at the minimum and don't forget to set your memory allocation in the preferences in after effects to really utilize and set aside ram for other programs and software in the background and for the hard drive go with an ssd or if you have the money the nvme drive before i go i want to give a quick thanks to our sponsors over at squarespace for sponsoring today's video Squarespace is the only one platform to create an amazing website whether it's for your store, online business, or portfolio. They have amazing themes to choose from, fully customizable so you can make it the way you want it to look like without having any coding knowledge required. They have awesome 24-hour support, and best of all, if you use the promo code DOJO at checkout, you can actually save 10% off your order and support the dojo. So check it out over at squarespace.com slash dojo. Squarespace, the number one place to create an amazing website. So that's pretty much it guys, just a really basic rundown on After Effects performance. I know it's very, very vague. I didn't really want to show a lot of benchmarks and testing, all the technical data. I really just want to give you a general comprehensive overview so that I can kind of lead you in the right direction so you can do your own research and build a proper PC for After Effects. There's a lot going on in the hardware scene right now. I don't want you guys to make a mistake buying certain hardware for your machine. So check it out, do your own research. Let me know what you guys think about my hardware recommendations and what you guys prefer. Are you team red, are you team green, are you team blue? Are you AMD Intel? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like more videos like these, like this video and subscribe for more videos. My name is Vincent Wynn from The Creative Dojo, and I'll see you guys next time.